doesn't make sense, but go ahead and answer if you can. I think the best way to answer that is to speak um, transparently about being in this role, um, learning the role and responsibilities of um, um, a school board director, and also attempting to establish relationship, trust, so that things can get done. Um, that's the other side of this work that is necessary. And so I think the advice or the, the unofficial or informal um, advice that has been given by Dr. Mann is to, with the hopes of if you follow it this way or approach things this way, you may be able to get um, more done. Great. Can you give me an example of any time when you uh, did something in contravention of what Dr. Mann told you to do. I'm projecting the formal question is broad and vague. Also, it's not relevant to the particular issues in this case, but go ahead and answer if you can. Um, give me a second. Um, I think for me, um, when I am not understanding or, or, or not agreeing with uh, a decision um, or a response by the administration, my idea of conflict resolution as the school board director, as I understand it, um, in accordance to the advice that has been given, would probably create more harm or um, limit what I can get done or the access that I have. And so, again, the, the advice um, unofficially from Dr. Mann is if you go about it in this way, um, you may be able to achieve um, whatever it is that you're trying to in comparison to if I address the conflict um, in the way that I know how, it may create more problems or confusion. And so, again, unofficial, informal advice given to her based on her experience, based on things that she's seen, but it's, it, I still had the choice to do what I wanted to do. But you can't, given that choice, you still can't identify a time when you exercise that choice, right? Yeah, so in particular, um, there was a, a, a very um, a public um, situation or scenario where board members were um, approached by media mm -hmm. um, regarding an internal matter as a result of a whistleblower complaint. And I immediately, at the time, wanted to um, provide a response to the media, um, even with my limited knowledge, um, because in my mind, I knew that things were done wrong or that I didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. And so prior to making that decision, I called the Office of Board of Governance and I spoke with Dr. Mann and she gave me, she offered alternatives to addressing my concerns without going to the media with limited information and possibly causing um, more confusion. Okay. So. so that's an example of you doing what Dr. Mann said. Did I miss that? That's an example of me following the advice that Dr. Mann gave me, okay. yes. Okay. All right. So, in the in my question specifically was, can you name an instance when you didn't follow her advice? And I understood you to answer that by giving us an example of when you did follow her advice. Did I misunderstand that? Uh, I think I misunderstood your question. A time when I did not follow the advice um, was when I submitted a proposal um, that was a big deal um, and submitted press releases thereafter. Um, and needless to say, the proposal failed. Um, it was at a time when um, the advice that was given to me about how to introduce it um, and how to create a narrative for the media to support the effort instead of harming um, that narrative or causing harm, that was the time when she gave me explicit advice and I didn't follow it. Okay. I got it. But then your your overall agenda failed, right? Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. All right. So then I also heard you uh, testify earlier that you're aware of times when, uh, or the facts that employees are told by management not to go directly to um, directors. I, I'm going to object to the formal questions. Broad and vague calls for speculation, and I think it 
misinterpret your testimony, but go ahead and answer. Can you rephrase that? Sure. And this is, I'm asking you to, to talk about the testimony that you just gave several minutes ago. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood you to say that uh, you knew of employees being told by administration not to go directly to a board of uh, directors. Um, yes, yes, not to engage with school board directors. Okay. Yes. Without, I mean, I've heard different yeah. sides of the story. Yeah. And these people are all uh, employees of MPS that you're talking about, right? All of them are not employees. The majority of them were. And do you believe that them to be citizens of the, uh, the United States of America? Yes. Okay. So are you aware of any written rule that prevents employees from going directly to uh, board uh, members? No, it's actually quite the opposite. Okay, do you believe that there could be any consequences for employees going directly to board members? Check the form questions, broad and vague, also argumentative, calls for speculation. Go ahead and answer if you can. Uh, can you restate the question? No, I will just have a repeat. Question, do you believe that there could be any consequences for employees going directly to board members? Same objections, go ahead and answer if you can. Um, I have been told, yes. Who told you that? Um, employees and based on the um, complaints that we've received. Okay. What kind of complaints are we talking about? Um, whistleblower, public complaints, um, um, conversations with employees that have left the district, um, and um, active employees. Do you ever, are you ever aware of an employee being actually disciplined for talking to a board member? I mean, I have not sat through the actual discipline process, but I have heard that it has occurred. And how did you hear that? Through the either employees, the current or former employees. Okay, so the people who had the actions done to them are the ones who told you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Now, is Debbie Keith one of those employees? Um, yes, I, um, I've actually have not had a direct one-on-one, -on -one, a formal one-on-one -on -one with um, um, Mrs. Keith, uh, but I have had um, conversations um, okay. and I've heard and I've read it. Um, what about Teresa Falder? Yes. Okay. How about, uh, well, just can you list all the other whistleblowers that you're aware of? No, I, um, off the top of my head, um, no. And that's because there's too many? I'm objective for him because it's broad and vague, calls for speculation, also argumentative. Go ahead and answer if you can. Honestly, um, I mean, I can't even, I, there, that could be part of it. Uh, that could be part of it, but also I don't, I haven't seen the list, the formal list enough. Um, to have all of the names familiarized and be able to state them off the top of my head. I understand. Do board members know the names of whistleblowers? Check the forum questions. Broad debate calls and speculation is what other board of directors know. Go ahead and answer if you can. Um, I'm cert I know we can access that information. I also know that the conversations have been had where we have received the names of whistleblowers. We've received correspondence in our office. Um, we've even received some other forms of outreach. How about from Matt Chase? Yes. Matt Chase makes reports to the board about whistleblowers? Uh, yes, yeah. He yes. does that on a regular basis, is that right? Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how much, how often they're received, but I, I can't speak to it occurring on a regular basis. Okay. I don't, I don't understand how that would be defined. Um. Fair enough, but um, the Mr. Chasen, to your knowledge, compiles and sends to the board um, documentation synthesis of whistleblower reports. Is that fair? I think I've, ex I've, I've experienced that maybe once or twice. Okay, and that basically alerts you to the nature of the whistleblower complaints. Is that fair? It, it, yeah, that's what it's done in the, during those one or two times, yes. Did I identify who made the complaint? 
Um, you know, honestly, um, up front, no. I think that information is kind of redacted or removed. Okay. Um, yes. It's oh. not until um, we are in that space with an attorney where there's attorney-client privilege. <laughs> I can't speak to that, but typically it, when it gets to that point, that's when we receive a little bit more information about complaints. So you're receiving these reports in multiple formats. Is that fair? Um, yep. Okay. And this is directly from Matt Chasen is what we're talking about? Um, no. Okay, you only get in one format from Matt Chasen? Um, that I've experienced, yes. Okay, and does he ever send, because so far we're talking about presentations directly to the board where Matt Chasen reads out some documentation, is that right? Um, yeah. Okay, does he ever submit reports to the board uh, without making an oral presentation? Yeah, we've received reports, not necessarily about whistleblowers, um, but about other matters that fall under his um, leadership within that office. Okay, how about lawsuits? Is the board ever made aware of lawsuits filed against MPS anytime? Um, yes, we. I, I've been in um, sessions. Of course, there's been attorneys present, but we have been made aware of lawsuits. Okay, the attorneys making you aware are the ones making you aware of the lawsuits? Yes. Okay. And who uh, do these attorneys work for? Uh, the attorneys work for uh, the office, or not the office, the um, school board. Okay. And um, we heard testimony from uh, Ms. Herndon that the board doesn't actually direct the attorneys what to do. Is that your experience? I'm going to object to the form of that question. She did not testify to that. She said the attorneys there are to provide advice and guidance as well as explanation as to the case. No, that was your testimony. Mr. No, Peter. that's your That was your testimony. Okay. You've got to quit misinterpreting people's testimony when you're presenting it to a witness to say yay or nay. That is inappropriate. Mm. Keep that in mind. Good. So, do you have the question before you? Uh, please restate it. Okay. She's asking you to do restate you me, it. Do you want me to read it? Please. Okay. Question. Okay, and we heard testimony from Ms. Herndon that the board doesn't actually direct the attorneys what to do. Is that your experience? Yes, um, the, my experience is that the attorneys um, provide advice, um, they provide the information, and as a board we are supposed to um, direct or instruct them on what the next moves um, should be. That has been my experience um, <coughs> at those times in the election. So you have had an experience of the board directing the attorneys, is that fair? Yeah, so, um, I mean, the final directive is typically, is always given from the board. Um, like I said, they provide advice based on their expert um, experience, um, their expertise, um, based on all of the facts. Uh, we are typically presented with that at the time. Um, we deliberate, and then um, we give uh, a directive to the uh, attorney, um, we request more information, um, but it's usually this, uh, I guess the best word that I can use in this space is more of a collaborative um, or um, just open um, process where questions are being asked, answers are being provided, um, advice is being given based on previous cases or their expert opinion, and then we as a board have to make that decision, um, which is typically made by the majority of the board. I got it. So, um, what is being presented to you? Is that an offer or something else? It depends on the case. It depends on the case. It depends on, or not the case, but the, the incident or the complaints or whatever it is that we're discussing at the time. The outcomes are different um, and the directives are different based on those factors that are presented. Okay. Have you ever been presented an offer in Teresa Falleron's case? Objective Charlie question. Broad and vague. Also, if there is an attorney present, I'm going to instruct you to not answer that question on attorney client privilege. I can't answer. Why not? Um, because there were attorneys present during that time. Okay. And for the record, I don't recall discussions about any settlements or um, any final actions. Uh, we're talking about Teresa Falleron's case or others? Uh, specifically Teresa Falleron. Okay. I understand. 
Uh, we've I had this other. Well, we just want to keep the same number every chat. Why don't you identify it for the record first? It's Exhibit 6 from the Herndon deposition. Go ahead and review it. Have you seen this document before? I believe so, yes. Okay, when did you see it before? Um, a while ago. Um, I see that it's dated from March 25th, but I can't confirm that was the actual date that I saw it, but I do vaguely recall seeing this document. Okay, and it's addressed uh, to you, is that right? Yes. Okay. And my name is there. And uh, the email that it uses for you? And... It's correct. It's correct? Yes. Okay. Is that the only email you use for uh, district business? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll ask that in the negative. You've never used another email address other than the one indicated on this front page to conduct district business? Well, I have um, sent information out regarding events, um, town halls, um, through my um, info mm -hmm. at Aisha Carr, my domain. Yes. Okay. And do you get emails that are directed at board governance? Um, typically, I, I would think so, yes. I can't confirm that we receive them all, but I know that we receive emails. Do you believe that you're supposed to receive emails that are sent to board governance? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and, and let me, I'll say this. I receive them when it's either addressed to the entire governance or when it's specifically addressed to um, District 4 or um, Representative Aisha Carr. Okay. And why will you not tell us why Jackie Mann is no longer in that position? Again, <laughs> I'm going to instruct you not to answer this question, one, because there's a protective order that is out there that has not been ruled on and two that involved attorney-client privilege. So I'm instructing that to answer. Okay, so to be clear, you uh, the only way that you know why Jackie Mann is not in that position is a conversation that an attorney was giving you advice on. Is that fair? 